gazillion of these back at the first of the year. You want to guess what it is? I want to take a moment and congratulate Mark Burns again for winning our Garrett Pro Pointer AT in the contest that Digging with Seven in Tennessee Jeff had. Mark correctly guessed that Digging with Seven would find a large scent in episode 152. And here's a picture of Mark with his Garrett AT Pro Pointer. Congratulations, Mark, and hope that you enjoy it. Also want to remind you that we have a current giveaway contest that will run through December the 15th in conjunction with Josh Kimmel and Beyond Sight and Sound and Ohio Metal Detecting. Digging with Seven and Tennessee Jeff have a 2017 Christmas giveaway. It's a Mind Lab Go Find 40 that we're going to give to some lucky kid this Christmas. So go and check out that contest here on Digging with Seven on YouTube and enter any kid in the lower 48 of the United States that is age 15 and under, and good luck. Max says he's got a cuff button, he thinks, down here. Got a little company too, got a cow. I just dug it up and I flipped the thing over. It's very late. I ain't even touched it. I don't know if it's got a shank on it or not. I see it there. It's a brass. No, shanks broke off of it. Don't matter, they still cuff buttons, so off of the side of the hill. The uh house set right up there on the hill. Well, good job. A little buckle. Oh, oh, it's on the other side of that. And a little buckle. I don't know what that is. I don't either. I don't think it's that old. Yeah. So. You found more than I have though. I ain't found nothing. Square now. <laughs> oh well. This hole here, this came out real real scratchy but it is a wheat scent you can see there and uh, don't know that you can see the date but it is a 1910 i found a couple of wheats up here and two or three indians so that's second year wheat that's a good find right there oh, i could have found it Yeah, it's a button. It's a two-piece. Huh? It's a two-piece with a shank. I think shank's just bent over. It's a button, though. That's a nice one. I found a gazillion of these back at the first of the year. You want to guess what it is? Been a while since I found one of these. A harmonica reed. You can almost see the impression where it came out right there. Found a bunch of them at the first of the year, I tell you. Mike's got a suspender clip here. It's kind of what I was hoping to find today was one of those, but I haven't. Where'd you find it out on? Over here, that's full of that's full of signals down there, Lowell. You need to be down there with that thing. You can you can pick them up with. Uh, down below the tree there. Yeah. yeah. I want to stop and do a shout out to my buddy Ohio Relic Hunter. You see his YouTube channel there on your screen. He's a faithful viewer and he's also a faithful listener to our radio program Relics Radio and also supports Josh Kimball on Beyond Sight and Sound. That's kind of where I got acquainted with him. He's just a great guy, so go check him out. 
like, subscribe, and share on his YouTube channel, and be sure and tell him that Tennessee Jeff and Digging with Seven sent you. I hope it's not too deep, and this was a screaming signal right here. I thought it's probably going to be a can to start with. It's an umbrella slide. Find these around these old house sites. That's a good relic find there. That's a fairly deep hole right there. And that is a big old iron buckle right there. I tell you. That thing is huge. And I didn't film it a while ago. Let me see if I can get it out here. Also found a foot off of a uh, stove, wood stove, cook stove. A couple of iron relics there. Mike's got something else that I like right here. And he's kind of done like an archaeologist. He's got it up on a pedestal here. <laughs> See the imprint there? Where was that? That thing was laying. No, it had part of the... Uh, I'd say it had a part of the ring or something. Now I find I found one at the back end of this that had a bull on it. That one doesn't have a bull. Look like it's got a couple of starfish or palm trees. I don't know what those are. Oh, it's a good find though. <laughs> that hole there, fairly deep hole. You know how much I love finding suspender clips. One of my favorite things to find. This one here's in pretty bad shape. It's mangled up a little bit, but I'll sure take it. <laughs> I doubt anybody knows for sure how many different types of brass suspender clips or clasp that there are. I found 50 last year and over 40 this year, and I don't think any two of those are alike. The first suspenders can be traced to 18th century France, where they were basically strips of ribbon attached to the buttonholes of trousers. You might not know that suspenders were considered an undergarment never to be seen in public. Therefore, fashion required that a man wear a vest or a coat to hide his suspenders. In fact, visible suspenders were considered risque as recently as 1938 when a town in Long Island, New York, tried to ban gentlemen from wearing them without a coat, calling it sartorial indecency. In the early 1820s, British designer Albert Thurston began to manufacture the first known modern-day suspenders called braces in Britain. Thurston's suspenders attached by leather loops to the trousers. In fact, the company still sells suspenders today. Suspenders, also called galluses in the 19th century, were once almost universally worn due to the high cut of the mid-19th and early 20th century trousers that made a belt impractical. Metal clasps were invented in 1894 so that the suspenders could be clipped on rather than buttoned, meaning that pants no longer had to come with buttons sewn in the waist as they had been. Suspenders began to lose popularity during World War I when men began to become accustomed to uniform belts. And while suspenders were still regular attire throughout the 1920s, because of their image as underwear, some men switched to belts during the 1930s, as vests, which had hidden suspenders, became worn less often. And I bet you didn't know that one of the first U.S. patents for suspenders was issued in December of 1871 to a man named Samuel Clements. Oh, you may know him better as Mark Twain. Mike's got a, a button here. Looks real good on the front, like a reef. Goes around. It's iron back 
which would make you think it was probably overall, but it's an old overall if it is. That's a good find right there. <laughs> That's what what it ring up? Hey? What it ring up? Uh, 1203, 1202, 1203. I mean, solid. Yeah. That's good. This one here wasn't very deep. Had a good sound. It's broke. Top of it's broke off. I checked the hole. It's not in there. There's a hole right there. You can see. But, uh, I believe that that might be number 41. I'm shooting for 50 of those this year. Got a little iron buckle out of that hole there. Not a great find, but it is another relic from this old house. Out of that hole right there, I got another heart. Still got the little loop up here at the top. And still got a lot. I don't know if you can see it or not. Still got a lot of gold gilt left on the back. I ain't got the heart to tell Mike what I found. Have I got to do flip flops and all that stuff now? No, I hope not. Oh. <laughs> well done.